Hello, so welcome to the video about my setup for the 600k ride um, and in general what I learned um, over the course of the longer rides I did, um, what I would do differently, what worked, what didn't work. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. The ride, 600k ride was a hard ride. Um, each ride actually leading up to the 600 had its own challenges and they all taught us something and so each ride we took what we learned and we improved upon and we used for the next ride. So I think that's key when you're doing uh, these Odax rides and you're getting longer and longer rides. Just learn what you can from your mistakes and apply those lessons to your next ride. Then you can go faster or further. It wasn't an easy ride. You saw that uh, in the video. We worked hard. Uh, the weather wasn't great one of the days, I had Achilles tendon problem, some of the things you didn't see <laughs> that went wrong. Um, Nathan had Garmin issues, so in the 400 he did have Garmin, Garmin issues as well. Um, he's the Garmin 800, which is a bit of an older device, and we just think it's not capable of having both the large file size um, for navigation and recording at the same time, because it was fine when he wasn't navigating, um, but when he was trying to navigate and record, the Garmin just did not work properly. Um, so we probably should have broken the navigation file into multiple files. So all of you out there with older Garmin's, that might be um, a help to you. Um, but we have my Garmin for navigation, so that's fine. We just defaulted to only using mine. As far as for the Odex, um, we had checked on what we needed to do if that should happen because his, his Garmin did fail on the 400 as well. Um, so we were just told to collect receipts as proof of our checkpoints. So that's what we did. Um, so yeah, we had a plan B. The other things we didn't capture on video, which is probably Nathan's happy about. Um, on day two, we were turning around and we were on some tram tracks. And we, had a, uh, we missed a turn, so we were turning around to go back. Uh, he had one foot unclipped and he just he just fell over, just a, I think, tiredness. So uh, he banged his knee and he did something to his bike. He didn't fall on the drivetrain side, but somehow, probably knocking the handlebars, he wasn't able to to change the uh, front chain ring so he's stuck in the small luckily <laughs> he's stuck in the small one and it didn't matter too much because the ride at that point was fairly flat we were in Belgium in the Netherlands um, so it wasn't really a big hindrance uh, it was just a bit of an annoyance the same my bike I couldn't um, get into my top smallest gear in the back cassette so the biggest ring so that was a bit annoying but again our route was fairly flat and even with the extra weight on my bike it wasn't it wasn't much of a hindrance at all. And then the only thing that happened that I haven't mentioned that was actually quite upsetting was on the way into the town we were planning on spending the night, about midnight I would say, we were about 45 minutes away, um, we were going up a small hill and a car came up alongside, it was, the roads were fairly quiet at that point in the night, um, and the car slowed down alongside Nathan and I was in the front so I couldn't see what was happening but I heard, heard Nathan shouting and swearing so I knew something wasn't right and something was funny just by the car slowing down I knew something weird was happening um, and what turned out it was a bunch of lads in the car and the guys were reaching out and trying to push Nathan off his bike um, I'm sure his shouting and swearing in English probably didn't help the matter. I'm not sure how the French and English get along these days, but either way, not a cool thing to do, not a fun thing to have happen to you. Obviously it shook up Nathan, it upset me, and we just kind of had to brush it off and just continue on and get on with things and just get to where we were going. Um, which is a lot of things when they go wrong, you just have to get to the, you know, the solution. Don't moan, don't complain, just get on with it, because um, otherwise you're just wasting precious time that you don't have. So yeah, so things went wrong, but again, you just have to, you know, beforehand to be prepared for everything you can be and the things you can't control, the weather and things like that. Um, you just have to keep your head, you know, on your shoulders and deal with it. <laughs> so yeah, um, those are the things that went wrong. So I think we we're pretty lucky, you know. I told you about my strategies in the last video of why we chose the route and why we went to France. Um, and all those strategies paid off. The wind was in our favor. Uh, the route, you know, it was hilly the first day and at the beginning and then it flattened out for the second day. Um, flat is great, it does have its drawbacks because you're, you're always spinning so you don't get that downhill break. But uh, all in all, strategy worked, it paid off, um, so quite happy with that. Things I would do differently, um, I didn't realize it was a bank holiday in France. And so it was a long weekend, which was interesting because a lot of the places were dead. You know, they're quite quiet when we ride through. But then we couldn't get accommodation in the town we chose to spend the night. So before we got there, we were about 45 minutes away. We were checking availability and there just wasn't anything. And we kind of had that feeling earlier in the day. We did a quick check. 
we started phoning um, with no luck. So we just showed up in town, hoped that, you know, we showed up at a hotel, they'd have a room, we'd get, we'd get a room. We did this for, we were on our third hotel and they had no room. So instead of riding around a town we didn't know, we started phoning some more hotels. I started looking up when the train station opened, uh, maybe where churches were, just somewhere we could find shelter because any, even if we had a bivy, we could have probably um, used a bus stop or something out of town. But it was a major storm and we we're on the coast, so there was really strong winds. And at that last hotel, we didn't even leave. We were underneath their covering and where their door was because we didn't even want to leave because it started really raining. It was really windy, um, oh, like 60 kilometer an hour gusts. It, was, it wasn't it was safe to cycle basically. So we couldn't even push on and cycle through the night. And we knew it was gonna rain all the next morning. So we knew, you know, it wouldn't be that the sun would come out and we could take a nap in a park somewhere. We knew that that rain was gonna last and it was gonna last a good 12 hours. So yeah, um, maybe I might bring a bivy next time, but oh, I don't know. It's the thing about um, touring that I really loved. I loved that I had my house with me all the time. I had my tent, I had my sleeping bag or bivy. Um, and in this case, we were in a town with a fair number of hotels and we didn't foresee it being a bank holiday and then the hotels literally all being sold out. Thankfully for us, the girl saw us out there and um, came to our rescue. Somebody didn't show up for a room and she thought it was a pretty safe bet to give that room to us. Maybe she had a couple of other rooms to fall back on, but Thankfully, she took pity on us and let us have a room. Um, so all was well, but we did lose about 45 minutes, you know, faffing around about that. So I think I probably would have just booked that and committed to that town is, is where we were going to get to that night. Uh, the other thing I would do differently, so not knowing that part of France and not knowing Belgium really at all, um, we went through a lot of areas that were quite populated and the stopping and starting was just a bit ridiculous for some of it and it, it just killed our average pace. So I would avoid those towns, avoid those populated areas unless it was later at night. Um, so Dunkirk, I didn't realize was near as big as it was or Dieppe. Um, so I probably would have avoided those two major going into them, um, majorly populated areas. And then in Belgium, we came across, you know, places you've never heard that had just mile after mile of beachfront condos that were like 12, 13 stories high. It was, it looked like surfer's paradise in, in Australia to me. I'd never heard of these places. Um, so I'd love to go back. Um, one of them looked like the Hamptons uh, in the States. It was just bizarre. So yeah, I would love to go back and explore these places, but when you're trying to get decent speeds, riding through them is utterly painful because you just see your average speeds just dropping. And when your Achilles tendon is hurting and stopping and starting is the last thing you want to do. Yeah, it, it kind of worked against us a lot. So we had a lot of time to make up because of that. Um, so yeah, those are the two things I would change. Um, and one of them I'm not even sure I would change. I would just maybe check if there's a bank holiday next time. <laughs>